the enlightenment, Hindu meditation has no enlightenment, it's uh, idol worshipping. So this not a, there's no light at all, it's devoid of light. So unless, unless we, we praise the Divine and we seek a, a power higher than ourselves, not something we've made from our hands. So the, the acknowledgement of tafakkur and contemplation is that, <clears throat> I'm an oppressor to myself and I'm seeking guidance, that's why we don't meditate alone. It's my alone that's endangering me, it's myself that is my enemy. You know if you watch Venom you'll understand, it's like sitting down and saying, I want me and Venom to be in a room, meditate. Why would I want that? If, if I'm going to sit and meditate in, in silence by myself, my demonic ego is going to be sitting in the room with me and he's going to rip me to pieces. Because he's got me all alone exactly where he wanted me. So tafakkur was never something like that. So tafakkur came with the science of reality that go to the room, acknowledge you have venom with you, is a demonic ego of your character and then ask for your shaykh to be there present with you. And so that one the miracle can begin to happen for you so you understand who your shaykh is and that their nazar and their soul is very powerful. So when you go into the room you close your eyes and ask for your shaykh to be present because your GPS coordinates has to be clear. So we read the madad, we're asking from Allah from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq all the way to the end of the golden chain to be present with me and asking my shaykh to be present with me and that I'm a weak servant, I'm an oppressive servant and I visualize that my shaykh is with me and I'm nothing. So it's very specific and that the nazar of the shaykh is like a satellite that they come with the perfected light from heavens. That heavenly light has to keep shining on me to burn my demons. So they don't like that so they tell you, no, 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 don't do this kind of meditation. So imagine without this heavenly coordinates, without the satellite of shaykhs sitting there sending their light onto you, burning all the bad character and then all the specifics on how we teach how to do that, you're asking from heavens. So it's, it's like uh, having a satellite dish on your house and say, now I want to turn on the TV but I want heavenly satellite channels. Without the satellite there's nothing comparable to that. You can't say, I'm just going to get a TV and I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to receive the satellite images, you're going to receive nothing. So anything that's not developed by that heavenly reality, no matter how much they copied us and no matter how much they took from the teachings of enlightened and monotheistic beliefs, it's not the same. And the reality can be like a hair, it can look like it's the same, they talk like they're the same but it's nowhere near the same. Because when you go into a room and you call upon statues and you breathe ab uh, about different uh, creatures, you're going to become possessed. And that's why many of them that do those practices they begin to tattoo themselves with snakes. So we met many people that were doing these types of different practices and they had snakes tattooed on their back and on their spine. And we asked one of the gentlemen, that, why do you have a snake on your back? It's horrific from our teaching. He said, no that's my kundalini. So what are you talking about? You know what kind of demon has fooled you? That's the demon. That when that demon is wrapping on your spine, he's trying to take your God-given force because he doesn't have it. He's devoid of any, any light from God. So he lives off of the electromagnetic field of this earth, he's not getting heavenly support. So you're a, a blessed creation and your spine is like your alif is the power of Allah comes on insan and moves on their spine. So that's not the anything kundalini or whatever that is, that was you know demons possessing people and fooling them that the, these energies and get these tattoos and these markings but they're being yoked by shaitans, tied up and, and you know like cattle by shaitan. So Islamic… Uh, 
tafakkur is not even anything comparable. It is the, the prime and the golden realities of paradise and there's nothing on this earth that even in a drop of similarity to its reality. Everything else is very, very demonic and uh, becoming more and more demonic and these are why these people then marking themselves with these demonic images all over them, so very, very different. And this is also a najat in the last days. The reason they're allowing all of this teaching everywhere, it's a salvation that if you make the connection, make the madad and understanding, when these demons begin to show themselves and, and you know be prevalent, now they're showing them in people. You can see now every man and woman is marked with you know markings all over their body. So they're already showing themselves when they actually begin to come out of the markings then the, you know the game is on. But those who made the tafakkur, the contemplation, their madad, they should also see the same realities from paradise that they feel the madad coming out, the energies and the realities of the heavens coming out and lights that are blessing them, dressing them and inshaAllah protecting them. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah If we plan on migrating, should we migrate to Vancouver where the center is or to better to migrate to Medina? Yeah, I wouldn't plan on migrating anywhere right now, nothing is, is, uh, is uh, of that reality. <clears throat> Everywhere, everyone wherever they are Allah has a protection for them because Allah wrote for them to be where they are. If He wanted them somewhere else, He would have wrote for them to be somewhere else. This is not about running somewhere, this is about building ourselves. Because wherever we go Allah says, we don't change a condition of a people until they change what's within themselves. So if we feel that we're in a bad area, we're going to be in difficulty, well we have to make sure that we are in ourselves good and that we've built ourselves, protected ourselves, enlightened ourselves and then Allah make all the conditions around us to be protected. When you do the madad, that's what we said before that when you do the madad the shaykh can reach you wherever you are, he doesn't need you to be five feet in front of him looking at him. They don't need that at all and the more that you are in front of him you may become heedless of your practices. So wherever people are the shaykh can reach them, it's just a matter of you focusing. As soon as you focus the light of that soul is there, faster than the speed of thought. So we don't understand our power of manifestation, that was interesting so we have some people that very enlightened and they started to ask questions about manifestation. And the power that Allah has given to us is something that people don't understand. So He gave us the ability to think but in reality we have ability to manifest. So with this aghal shaitan hijacks our brain for what? Because manifest something, you have a gift that God gave to you. So when He manifests somebody to conjure demonic images and put them in demonic movies, they now came into existence because of your thoughts. Because Allah gave this gift to insan, wa laka karana bani adam. So when the demonic force comes to bani adam, and says, you know, make something horrific and they use their God-given gift to think of these horrible things, Allah's allowing them to conjure it and manifest it and as a result it takes on an existence. That's why I said, if you see it, Allah brought it into existence. And this is a gift from our ability to make things happen. And that's why then the tariqahs come to teach that you are a very powerful being manifested in Allah's way. So that when you visualize, I want to visual, visualize myself in the presence of Prophet Allah then make your reality to be there. I want to visualize myself like this, so everything that we're doing we're manifesting all the holy of holies and that's what's important. 
But now people are, are manifesting all their bad ideas, bad characteristics. So now there's a person for example doesn't have anything but in their alter ego they wish, I, I wish I had this Ferrari, I, I wish I had this cash, I wish I had these hotels and restaurants. Before you would just wish it. Now shaitan is teaching them how to conjure it. So then they actually push their desire and they start to take pictures with the car that's not theirs. They start to, to Photoshop restaurants that they didn't go to. They build the whole identity that takes a life of its own. And all of a sudden all over Facebook the person's a big influencer having this, having that, being here, traveling here, traveling there until 10 years later of his manifestation that he actually took that wasn't real and manifested it into something and it took on an existence of its own and then later on five years later they arrest them for lying and cheating and everything fraudulent. So social media is actually shaitan is using their power to understand and manifest. So now everyone's manifesting their, their alter ego that was bad, their nakedness, their inappropriateness, their, the things they don't have, all their desires, all the things that they want. Shaitan is making them to manifest it with social media and now it's taking on a force of their own. But the more demonic one is that when, he, when the person does that, that entity and that nafs is now very powerful very demonic, very dunya oriented and it begins to influence their actual own personality because now it took on a force of its own and that's what the Venom movie is trying to show people that the negativeness within somebody can begin to manifest. If you give it a life and you give it power it will become something huge and demonic. Because we don't understand the nafs and we don't understand how demonic it can become and how big and, and horrific it can become. And that's why Prophet brought for everything for us from childhood, destroy the nafs of your children and destroy the nafs of how it's going to grow. That's why what we eat, what we drink, how we discipline our children was all geared towards destroying that nafs, not empowering it. Not letting a, a little shaitan to grow into a demon that will go out and, and kill people because once that demon is big it will overtake that person and influence everything that the person wants to do. So this power of manifestation is now very prevalent on this earth and that's why tariqah is coming and teaching to us is manifest the good, manifest that your love for Prophet you manifest it, Allah will make it to be real, Allah will make your presence to be in that presence, Allah will make all of those realities that you're asking for to be real. Don't you know move towards the nafsani and make all of those horrific characteristics to be real. And that's why you see the world is now separated, 99% are this way and less than 1% are the other way. As Salaamu Alaykum Mawlana Walaykum As Salaam wa Is it permissible to request madad from mountains, rivers, fire and other natural elements and how can we connect with them? Thank you for your guidance. <coughs> yeah better to, to focus on <laughs> madad of the shaykh. <laughs> yeah. Well why do you need the madad of the mountain if, if you're not madad <laughs> drink madad of the shaykh? <laughs> That's why that, you know, we, uh, uh, we keep going over it as if it's simple but I don't think that many of the people have understood that yet. That when you mad at the presence of the shaykh and mad at and mad at and mad at the shaykh and understanding and going to the fana of the shaykh and lose yourself in their reality, you're losing yourself in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So uh, you know why focus on anything but the Muhammadan reality? Because then you're wasting your time and you become like you know Indians that want to you know put tobacco around themselves and call on bears. Why would we want to call on bears? We don't want physical bears more or less spiritual bears. We don't call on the eagles and the hawks and the fox. I don't want to see any of these animals in real life more or less their spiritual reality because they're spiritually around too. Ten times more spiritual presence of bears than physical bears. If Allah created one physical bear, He created ten spiritual bears in the jinn world. And that's why these people who call on these creatures, 
but that, that, imagine in physical world calling on all the physical bears, your house will be a zoo, it wouldn't be anything heavenly. And that, that's why then you put tobacco and all these you know bizarre things around you because it's a zoo. But if you want from the heavens then that's, that's the only focus. I want to take a Muhammadan guide, I want to visualize them, I want their light to be with them because who's them? And what are they coming with? And by an entry door I manifest my presence in that door and I make that to be a door for me that every time I go through that door I enter into the presence of Sayyidina to the realities of manifestation. Because you make a, a scene for yourself, you visualize a time in which you saw the shaykh, you, you saw him visually on the shows, you saw him in person and that become like a door for you. Every time I want to sit and make my tafakkur I see that image and it becomes for me like a spiritual, what is that show that has that circle, stargate. They use the Im image of a stargate, right? But this is our stargate. So as soon as I see that image of my shaykh, I remember it and I make that to be the manifestation of the door I'm going to go through. And as soon as I see that image I see myself and I ask to be greeting, I'm greeting, I'm asked to be dressing, then I'm asking to enter into that reality in which I don't exist and I entered into that reality of that manifestation. And that Allah then opens that ability that make that gate and go through it. But you have to work on it, believe in it and keep pushing it to happen and then as a result Allah makes that door to manifest for you and by via that door you enter into that reality, you enter into their wujud, into their reality and their light. And then they take you up into the light, into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and then again the same. That once that opens up then there's a manifestation in which they see the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that becomes their door in their heart for them that, Ya Rabbi that this is my manifestation, this is the door in which I enter to and as soon as they visualize it they're moving into that reality. So this is a very powerful power that Allah gave to us, people don't understand the heavenly but look what they're doing with the satanic. That how people are empowering their egos, you know everybody had these, these bizarre desires nobody knew about them. But now the whole world is posting you know fake images on Instagram, cars they don't have, money they don't have, lives they don't have, bodies they don't have. They say all the images have been altered, fat people making themselves super slim, slim people making themselves invisible. And they're so bad at editing that all the area around a person has been altered and people can see it's all been photoshopped, faces that are not even their faces. They showed all these faces, they're cartoon faces, it's so photoshopped. Why? So that all of this alter ego is now manifesting. Imagine all the negativity with that creature that you just now manifested and brought into this world and gave it an image and it's now feeding like a venom. And that will now come back to destroy the physicality, that's the, the demon that's now appearing. Just you think. <laughs> As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Wondering if you can elaborate on the seven names to know more about ourselves and lower our nafs, forgive me for my ignorance. Yeah, you have to just meditate. <laughs> You have to first get to know yourself and the name that you have and to, to make the connection with the shaykh and to through that connection to get the inspiration of who you are and what your connection and what your reality with the shaykh is. That's why that is an important stage. Just to know you know the seven names is, is of no value. Those seven names only come into effect when the meditation is very strong, the tafakkur is strong, the connection with the shaykh is strong. They go into their fana and later they begin to meet those personalities and they inspire what Allah created them for. Those are seven manifestations that Allah will begin to show you these manifestations and what is their role in your ascension into the Divinely Presence inshaAllah.
Uh, Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Waalaikum salam. Uh, what's the reality of eyes starting to burn all of a sudden? Who's starting to burn? Eyes. Eyes? Eyes they, they pick up uh, energy. So noor and high they pick up uh, lights. So people who if you go places and their lights are not good, not clean and, and or they have no light then the eyes burn and pick up all the, the bad energies. They become red, they, it's very difficult. So best always to walk with your eyes to the ground and always keep yourself in wudu. So before you leave anywhere you make wudu, pray Salatul Wudu as a protection, have your taweez. And uh, when you walk try to keep your eyes down as much as possible. If you're looking, 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 looking it's carrying everything. And that's why we have nazar bar qadam. So I keep my eyes upon my feet and then it goes deeper. When I train myself to be a person that's looking down to be humble then it begins to teach the reality of the nazar and the nazar is actually your heart's desire. Keep your heart's desire to be on your path and on your reality and to, to reach towards the Divinely Presence inshaAllah. Many of the other questions are all answered in your new book. In the new book, okay good yeah. Make sure that people uh, have a timeless reality inshaAllah and that you take the link uh, and make a review on Amazon. A very basic review, thank you, it was an amazing book, great everything but if you make it seem like you know like you're promoting the book, I think Amazon is kicking them all out. They're not allowing and thinking we're, we're sending people to do that. So as, as much as it can be sort of uh, neutral that it was great, I read the book and then if you take the link from the Timeless Reality and share it onto social media, to WhatsApp groups, to different groups inshaAllah, Allah address you, bless you and, uh, and we get that out and it's an amazing resource for tafakkur and contemplation. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon, wa salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. Obviously, the Surat al-Fatiha.